It's very important that we understand the misconception about the AI. The first of all, there is a huge and big misconception about the AI is that AI is synonymous with autom uh, automation. Now see, when we talk about AI, we just think that AI is most probably a robot that we have watched in some of the uh, Hollywood or Bollywood movies. Sometimes it's in uh, uh, you know, different form, different shape. They can be big, they can be small, and uh, they can uh, do everything, take uh, all the credits you have. That kind of uh, fearful uh, uh, understanding is there about the AI. Uh, but one thing we forget that there is a difference between AI and there is a difference between automation. Automation requires a human being to run it, behind it. So, uh, but in case of AI, it doesn't need human being. It trains itself to play the same role as a human being could do. Now, in case of journalism, how AI is going to work and how this is going to play a very important role. So, uh, as a student of history, I always like to go back to history and look the examples and then try to understand uh, how it's going to impact in our future as well. Now, of course, there is a danger that we could be trapped in the mistakes of our history. But if we carefully take actions, maybe we can avoid that. But the first important thing is that if you are aware about all these achievements of the modern civilization, especially the books and everything, it all started in a very uh, great ventures because of something happened in 1400 and that is the printing press. Gutenberg, a person, a German, he converted a wine making machine into a book printing machine. So the wine that makes you tipsy, the book that also makes you tipsy in other way. And see, since then, our brain has increased in size because we get to read more. Since then, we started seeing revolution in the printing areas. And the Gutenberg printing press actually taken job of many of the copywriters sitting in the Vatican City and uh, copying the Bible. That was not the end of it. That was actually the beginning. And the things we see after that is 1663, the emergence of first newspaper from the printing press. But something amazing happened during 1980s and 1990s, especially remember the emergence of internet. During 1980s, we see the emergence of internet. And it changed everything. Right now, many of our profession is entirely dependent on internet by making contents, by making comments, and also by giving uh, and sharing our ideas there. It took only 20 years to get that internet in our plates in a manner that we can't leave a single day without it. And finally, 2023, it's another boom. You possibly can change your and, and, and share and upload all your ideas in internet. It's, it's very possible. I don't know whether how it's going to work or not. But what OpenAI did is created a fear among all of us. Because we thought that it was going to take our job. There is a huge possibility, of course, in a way. And, and it has been taken Twitter. Uh, many of uh, very good journalists have started tweeting about it, that probably this is the end of journalism the way we see it. I am involved with journalism for more than six years, had the chance and opportunity to get taught by some of the very amazing faculties, and also wrote uh, some opinion pieces and worked with uh, editing books. So I have had this huge confidence on writing. And my wife, who is also with me today at this place, uh, listening my speech, was always uh, mad at me because I have never written a letter to her. You know, So I, I published a book from Belgrave, but I haven't sent a letter to my wife. That's a big, big disgrace. So what I was doing is, for one year, I was thinking what to write, what to write, what to write. <laughs> and then I spent six months to draft a letter of 300 words. I, I don't use pen and pencil, so I, I always write in laptops, so I wrote it. Uh, and then OpenAI came. And one night, I thought, OK, I was spending six months to do that. 
And I'm pretty confident that this is a good one, this is a good work, and I would be very proud to share it to my wife. So I asked OpenAI, hey, uh, so I'm thinking to write a letter to my wife, and this is the description. Can you please write a letter for me? And so it took 30 seconds to write that letter. Wrote 400 words, amazing. I take a print. I put that together next to each other. And I thought I should not send the letter I have written by spending six months. You see, the level of confidence damage it did in 60 seconds of my six years of experience of writing, editing, and publishing. Since AI has become so good, especially in its adolescent age, like it's a still child, see? It's not even a mature, it's a stage, and there is no end of it. At this stage, how it's going to react when it's going to be mature? If as a child it could make me stop and make me feel uh, you know, not that confident about my six years of work experience, but how it's going to do with the other things. So the point is, what role can journalists play in the future of journalism with the integration of AI? Now, because we journalists, we like to be in the limelight. We, we like to be uh, in the talk every day. We, we like to get uh, feedback every day because we publish and the next day we want to see people are praising. And now it's actually in a couple of minutes. We like to see how many are sharing and tweeting and everything. So the point is, the way we see journalism is dead. And it's, of course, alarming for a generation, no doubt. And it's very sad. I'm really sorry to say. And many of my colleagues would not maybe agree with me. But what I see from the point of view of these 460 years of history of journalism, the way journalism is and has been done is dead. And especially countries like us in Bangladesh, it's more dangerous. Because see, we do not even get the revenue of this open AI that is also developed by our corporate companies. So there is no way that our government would be able to compensate our journalists who are working in that area. So what to do then? And how to do that? See, the point is, it's not the problem with the AI. It's a problem with our business model. You see, there was an industrial revolution. A group of people who had the capital was able to build amazing industries and send human beings there like rats and exploited those human beings and gather huge amount of wealth. And that's how maintain this big facade of capitalism. What we are going to experience is a genocide of another generation in a different way, in a job perspective, of course. And that is very gloomy, uh, if, you, if you think from a big point of view. So the way all those typewriters lost their jobs overnight, the way all the manual journalists who are only depending on writing copies and editing is going to perish in a couple of years. I think this is a very high time that the journalist community, including the academics who are working in the journalism sector, to come together and to start a movement, a discussion, so that it could start a negotiation with these large companies, tech companies, as well as governments, so that there could be a compensation plan. How to relocate and rehabilitate these people who are going to lose a job at the same time. How could the perception regarding AI could be changed from an enemy, from a competitor, to a colleague? Because the world where we are going to live is we are not going to be only living with us and fighting between us. We are going to share the world with this new form which is created by us. Maybe we can reduce some of the collateral damage by starting rethinking about it, by reimagining it. And there, journalists and academics would be playing a very important role. And next time, when you would be using uh, AI to write something, uh, please also think that uh, you could be cheated as I was writing a letter to my wife. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for listening to me.